All right, so today we're going to talk about something very interesting. Uh, it, it, we've talked a lot about blocks to recovery. Blocks to recovery, um, there's a big category of blocks to recovery. So at NOM, we're, we start, at least I style myself as a blockbuster. So we, 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 like, we like blocks. Blocks are where the juicy work is. And one of the most common blocks has to be uh, what we call, and this is not me that came up with this, it's actually not even AA. It's in the index of AA though, you can find this. Uh, the concept of contempt prior to investigation. Uh, you know, you've, you've, everyone has kind of heard about like, uh, you know, you have addiction or mental health and you have to kind of have some kind of spiritual awakening or you have to kind of connect to nature or something. You got to do something different that you've never done before. And when we think about uh, what blocks people, this is a very powerful block. So what this <coughs> means is this is, uh, we have ideas about what it is, and we don't even try. So contempt prior to investigation, this isn't from AA even, there's like a psychologist, this is where the psychologist coined this, is the single biggest reason why people stay stuck, uh, be because they're unwilling to try anything new. You ever have that in your life? Where you, I can't do that, I, I know how that's gonna go. You ever have that? You ever meet people who are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, A, A is not gonna help me because it's just a bunch of people talking about their problems. It's triggering, that's what my buddy told me. Or I went to half an AA meeting once. And, and so, and here's the issue. And here's where that comes from. Contempt. Contempt is a good word in that it describes it very well. Contempt is a very negative view that prophesizes the outcome. And it's kind of, actually, <laughs> you know, it's like reverse it's like it's like uh, uh, everyone talks about prayer, but actually, did you know, you can you can ha you can negatively pray too, eh? Do you know that? It, it, it's uh, a negative prayer. Uh, is uh, you might have heard it said in a different way. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Have you heard that? Self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, negative intention. So intention setting, intention setting nothing in there says that it has to be good what you're asking for, nothing in there says that you have to sort of ask for healing, there's whole systems of cursing people, there's whole systems of like wishing bad on others. We have some words for that, you know, that you probably know, things like, you know, gossip setting, gossip spreading. Oh, did you know who's, who's sleeping with who? Did you really see them sleeping together? But you set an intention now. <coughs> maybe the universe is going li to listen, and maybe it's going to uh, add to the energy that's going to make that happen. In the East, the, the, the people, there's, a, there's, there's, there's many sayings about how don't talk too much. Because when you talk and you put things out, you can never take it back. It imprints on, in yoga we call it the Akashic Record. Uh, there's other words for it. There's many, many systems of understanding. But when you speak, You've, you, you've put something into the universe. And what you're doing is, is you're setting an intention. 
Um, law of attraction, have you heard of the law of attraction yet? Any of you experienced the law of attraction? Hands up if you've felt it. Yeah. You know, I did a meditation once that was designed to bring wealth. Fascinating. It was, it was a, I was just doing a course and part of the course was to do this meditation. I, I don't particularly, but I learned something about wealth though. So it was, it was, uh, it was, uh, uh, it was, it was the, the, the height of the COVID, right? You know, in the COVID and the stock market all crashed and, and someone was like, uh, and then I was doing this course in yoga and they, they had this meditation that would bring you prosperity is, is what it said. And so I did it for nine, uh, three, three months. And so then COVID stock market crashed it. I put some investment or my brother, he put some investment somewhere and they like, ballooned, you know, three, four, five times how much? No, oh, I think twice, two times uh, as much as what I, what I invested. So it worked. <laughs> it worked. But I didn't use it. So I just left it in there. Oh, yeah, maybe it'll grow some more. And then it all went away. So it, it, it's uh, um, the law of attraction, it actually does work that way. You can attract things. Um, uh, you can you can attract negative like negative things so in that case what I also attracted was greed and one of the effects of greed is is loss right that's the lesson that comes with greed you get and then you lose <laughs> so the idea is is you get and you should use it while you have it because if you don't it will be taken from you one way or the other the, the when you um, Law, you know, this is a Newton's law, right? Every equal, you've heard this, right? Every equal <coughs> action provokes um, an opposite reaction. Have you heard that? That's one of Newton's laws. It, it's The intention that you set before you do anything will set into motion what you get out of it. If you go into a seminar like ours and you say, ah, you know, it's just another course that I've done before. I've done lots of self-help courses, you know, you do the Non, non accounting level two or level one or something. Uh, oh, yeah, I've done this before. I know all this. You set an intention. That's going to block you from what there is to have. And one of the biggest ways that happens uh, and the most profound effect is actually contempt prior to investigation. And what they probably should say is prior to thorough investigation. That, that's implied. That's, any investigation has to be thorough or it's not really an investigation. It's rubber stamping. So the most common area where we see contempt prior to investigation is typically with uh, spirituality. I've tried that. I've done that. Um, oh, that, that, that kind of sounds satanic. I'm not going to go do yoga. Um, um, or, uh, uh, I, 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 I was never raised that way. So I'm not going to go now. Contempt is a negative intention setting exercise. It will come true. And the trouble is, is if you're needing recovery, this creeps up in all sorts of areas in your life where you're blocked. You know the outcome, and so you think you do. You, you consciously, subconsciously, or unconsciously self-sabotage. So this is one of the forms of self-sabotage. That's very, very hidden, 
people with a lot of contempt will be very intellectual, very smart. Um, and the end result is, is they won't take the opportunities in front of them. Everybody in yoga, this is what's said, everybody gets a chance in life. Uh, not one, but many chances to heal. Everyone gets chances. Vast majority of people get chances. You know, I know someone's going to say the baby thing. I'm like, I'm not, I don't know how it all, I'm just, I'm just, uh, uh, most adults get chances. And, and you know, it's, uh, uh, if you believe in reincarnations, everyone gets chances. The reality is, is do we take them? Do you take the chances in front of you? One of the things people do, they do it a lot at the, in the West. Like you read 50 books, self-help books. You ever do that? Like you just read books, all books, books, books. Louis Hayes, and then once that's done, you, you, you read uh, um, some yoga book. Or when that's done, you read some, some, some science book self-help book. Um, you ever do that? Or have you, have you know people that do that? They're just reading self-help books all the time? You ever see people who are reading self-help books all the time and they get stuck? Like their life doesn't seem to necessarily move much? It's pretty common. They may think it's moving much, but the person's not evolving. Because what they're doing is, they are uh, shopping. They are window shopping. They're not even investigating thoroughly. They're window shopping. They're reading quickly. They're reading superficially. They're understanding. If you, you know how long it takes me to read a book? A very long time. I kind of, I, I nibble on them, and then I, and then I think for a while, and I said, oh man, I, 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 uh, I, I just sort of have to ponder. I can't read very quickly. I don't know how people read these like profound books, any book, like Eckhart Tolle, or, or, or The Body Keeps the Score. People pound these books through like, how can you do that? How can you do that unless you're window shopping? Or you have a profound intellect that processes deep things at an incredible speed. But then, your life should be markedly different than what it is. If that's true. And that can be true. I can read things faster now than I used to. But I used to read things faster than I do now. That's the funny thing. I used to have this idea that I could understand these things at a rate that's faster than what I actually could. And so I would get through more books in a year, more information, more. And the more I do, the slower I become, the more I like to just park myself. And the window shopping, it, it, and I've said this in other videos and other times, but I have to say this, because the universe sends you what you need at the moment. It doesn't send you what you want. And the way journeys unfold is they don't unfold in like, uh, you remember those books? Choose Your Own Adventure? Is that what they're called? Like, if you want to do this, go to this page. You know, is that called Choose Your Own Adventure? Oh man, it's been ages uh, since I read one of those books. If you approach your, uh, your journey in life in that way, it's going to be a very long journey. Because you don't know what you need. Yeah, 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 Dr. Gill, how can you tell you? I don't know what I... That's the truth. <coughs> I don't know what I need. <coughs> I take a divine reading every day to tell me what I need, and it's often surprising. I don't know about you, but I don't know what I need. But 
the number of people with stall journeys who think they know what they need, as opposed to taking what the universe gives them and just go with it. The reason why you don't, contempt prior to investigation. At some levels, programming has been embedded in you through people you respect, or rather people uh, you respected as a child, through generations of belief systems, through media. You know, an example of that is, um, oh, I can never do fighting, I can't do martial arts. Contempt prior to investigation, I can never do martial arts. Because you watch James Bond, and then you look at, like, what are real fights like? Buddy smashes his head into, a, like, a toilet bowl, breaks the bowl, and Buddy gets back up, ready to fight. Are you kidding me? That sounds ridiculous. Any of you who know fighting know that that ain't true. That guy's dead, first of all. Second of all, it would take a special person who could actually take the head and put it through a toilet bowl. The head would fracture before that, but oh, sure, whatever. But it's programmed. The fear is in. Subconsciously, you don't think you have what it takes to put up a fight. So you become a coward. Contempt prior to investigation blocks you <coughs> from taking martial arts training. But it won't be the contempt you think of. But it's the same thing. You've been encoded with a belief. There was a cool video, uh, uh, Mindy showed it. Uh, no, was it Mindy? On the Women's, uh, women's uh, International Women's Day. It was, all, it was a great video. So they, 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 what they did is they asked a... Uh, um, First, they asked a bunch of adult women to, uh, uh, to, to, to run like a girl, okay? So, so adult women, uh, the, 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 the prompt was, uh, run like a girl. So what did the adult women did? Right? Like, who runs like that? I don't know. But, I, I, I don't, but this is what they all did. They, they asked like three or four different women. <coughs> Then they asked an adult man, run like a girl, did the same thing. Throw like a girl, same thing. The women did it, did it too. And then they, they, and then they, uh, they asked a, like a, a seven-year-old girl, run like a girl, proper running, vigorous, strong, the heck is that? That's weird. That's dumb. <laughs> That's what the, but like, if you ask yourself, contempt prior to investigation, that's what it is, right? Oh, this is all I'm capable of, so I guess that's all I'm capable of. You set a negative, a negative prayer is, is made, it echoes subconsciously, it becomes a self-fulfilling, and all of a sudden, you don't go to track school, you don't compete, you don't utilize your physique, you don't do martial arts training. Contempt prior to investigation. And what I'm trying to tell you is, is you're full of it. If you're stuck, you're, you're you know, you were raised as a, as a, as a, um, in a, in a certain church or in a, in a religion or uh, and, and, and you really hate that a lot of times when I work with people over time at the end of it they love that but we end up having to work through a lot of this well grandpa was like 
really religious. He went to church every day and he was this, but then he did this to me. So you throw the baby out with the bathwater. You never even give it a chance. Contempt prior to investigation. You you hear stuff online. Oh, you know, this is this is holy people, they do this, or you read, you go to a class and they tell you about the atrocities, and there are many atrocities committed by religion upon the vulnerable. That's it's a fantastic way to control people's minds. Uh, no question, and is much abused in life. Uh, but that doesn't mean it, it doesn't hold water. That doesn't mean you can't derive benefit from higher powers and spiritualities and universal connection. But it does mean if you try, you will, you will, and the people around you, because remember, subconsciously you've surrounded yourself with people just like you. That's what we do. We create echo chambers of our own <coughs> cesspool of existence. That's what we do, isn't it? Any new drinker comes to me, all my friends drink. Any new person with body image issue, all my friends are like, oh, this and that. <coughs> They're always talking about this. A drug addict has a lot of drug using friends. You surround, and, and you think that's a conscious decision. <laughs> it's not conscious at all, right? The, 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 the daughter who's raised by the alcoholic man <coughs> marries an alcoholic man. So all the while swearing in her eight, teens and twenties she would never be with <coughs> such a man. And that ends up in divorce, and then she finds another one, same M.O. I'm just trying to uh, explain the power of subconscious patterning. And you know why? <laughs> you, our, our templates are set. You develop a contempt against anything but what you're programmed. <coughs> it's conscious, but mostly subconscious, actually. The conscious part of it just becomes a justification. Contempt prior to investigation has to be the single biggest reason for blocks in recovery. And you can heal it. <laughs> it's ridiculously simple, actually, to heal. All you have to do is start doing the opposite with regularity. What does that mean? That means, well, if, for example, you're, you're, you want to work on your spirituality, you can set an intention. Okay, you know, I, 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 I think I have a thing against spirituality. All right. But I wish, I wish I could actually connect to that and get something useful out of it. You say that to yourself. Lots. What's going to start happening is, is your subconscious, which is way more vast than your conscious, is going to start to embed a program. We'll call it the anti-corruption program. You install it in there, and then it's going to put out all of this corrupt stuff. It, it, it's, it, it really is that simple, actually. You, you, you dose it more, you do more, more corrupt stuff leaves. I actually recently, I, I, mem I, I've, I've, uh, I memorized divine um, uh, Shabbats from our uh, scriptures. Every time I commit a new one to memory, number one, my mind never wants to do it. It's always hard. It takes me a week or two. And like, it's like two lines. It's not complicated. And yet, I memorize stuff way easier than I memorize these things. But one thing that ends up happening is, is I memorize what is essentially an, a positive intention. And then that night, or for a couple of days, I dream messed up dreams, really weird messed up things. <coughs> and then I feel great. <coughs> what you're doing is, or what I'm doing is, I'm installing something in my mind. 
through repetition. And then the things that, that's, that can't coexist with that, corruption can't coexist with divinity, spirituality, it just can't. You can't, it won't. It won't, co it won't coexist in the same time space. So, um, uh, at least some will have to leave. So over time, if you just repetitively set intentions, you know, I want to be open to spirituality, say that one. If you want to add a, add a, add a, add a anti-blocking component, universe, uh, whatever uh, prevents this, uh, uh, may that block be healed, even if that means slowly without me knowing. Some kind of intention like that will start to unblock you. Um, you. You see, you have a lot of good in you, right? It's not problems. Uh, you have a lot of good in you. There's a lot of good stuff programmed in you that just needs activation. It just <coughs> needs to be remembered, remembered, put that back together, remembered. And if you do it, and you're aware that every one of us is carrying a lot of contempt for a lot of things we've never tried, and you remember that the universe will send you what you need, but you're going to have to overcome the contempt block to use it. And that's when the saying, when the student is ready, when the student is ready, what happens? The teacher appears. Exactly. There's Variations have been pretty much every religion and spirituality uh, practice in the universe. And the answer is, is there's, there's, uh, there's not any shortage of teachers. There's lots of teachers and teachings. In the internet age, holy crow, it's everything's there. When you ready yourself by dealing with your contempt, you'll be amazed at what floods in your door and how quickly stuff starts to change. You, but you got to stop blaming everybody. You got to stop being this like, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, people complain a lot. People whine a lot. Oh, I'm so hard done by. And you might be. That's, that's not untrue. Everyone's got stuff. But it, it, it oftentimes is a manifestation of that contempt to externalize the blocks, the vast majority of blocks, I would actually say 99.999% of the blocks or more are internal. And when we deal with them, the law of attraction takes care of our external problems. So when the promises, they say things like, financial insecurity will leave us. Lots of people in AA, they say, I had no money, and then six months later, I have money, I have a job, I have stuff. And then you ask him how, oh, oh, Bob came and then he told me about this thing, I called this guy, I called that guy, he said he didn't have anything, but he told me this guy and this guy, and now I have a job. And, oh, I suddenly remembered that I had, I don't know, $100,000 in savings that I just forgot because I've been drinking 20 years. Weird things happen, really weird things happen, because of the law of attraction, because it's real, if you deal with your internal contempt, which is yours, yeah, someone might have given it to you, but it's, a, it's yours. If you deal with it, uh, the law of attraction fulfills you quickly. You don't have to believe. In fact, don't believe me. I don't want anyone to believe anything I say. I, I actually don't. It's, it's, it, it matters nothing if you believe what I say because you don't really believe it. Let's be honest. Oh, that's interesting. That's says about people in the West. Oh, that's really interesting. Window, window shop, window shop, window shop. Can you get another opinion? You know? Get another opinion. Get 50 opinions. Try not to lose your life along the way, waiting, because that's what happens. 
is the universe will slap you again and again, harder and harder, until you either figure it out or die. And then in the next life, maybe you'll get another chance. That's how it works. But you have to experience it and try it. And just try it by do, using positive intentions to deal with contempt prior to investigation. You can do it like that. If you believe in God, God. I don't know what kind of contempt prior to investigation I have, but whatever Dr. Gill's talking about, can you heal that? Maybe? Say that a lot. And see if it starts to happen. Your, your mind actually works like Google. It'll do exactly what you want it to do. It works like a ship. Uh, if the captain says, go in this direction, the engineers say, okay, they do with their back end, they're going to do this shit. But if the, if the captain's kind of dumb, go in this direction, then he runs down to engineering, okay, turn that switch, pull, pull that tube, type in random thing there, and the engineer's like, I'd love to say something, but the cap he's the captain. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Is that ship going to work? Ah, it might eventually, right? Like, <laughs> maybe when the captain goes to sleep, the engineer's like, all right, let's just clean this up a little bit. Let's, you know. Uh, but it's not going to be efficient. It's going to take a long time. And uh, a lot of recovery is like that. The more you get into it, uh, the more you start to micromanage your thoughts. And then in another video, I, 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 we talk about this a lot, your conscious processes, and I'm just going to throw some thought, like uh, numbers out there, maybe processes 10 thoughts per second. Like that's like a speed, right? Probably way fast, actually, at 10,000, not the yoga six. Yeah, okay. The, 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 uh, the subconscious is going to be that times trillions and trillions and trillions per second. That's how vast that is. It's way more vast than anything you can consciously conceive of. And so that's why you can store immense amounts of information. That's why I can say, after hearing one person say something once, that you don't believe anything I'm saying. Consciously you might, but that represents very little of your entire being. And your entire being determines your conscious state. So then that's why the window shopping happens. Because you see something, oh, that's interesting, consciously. Subconscious contempt kicks in, whoosh, next. That's how it works, right? It takes, it takes a very strong connection. It takes a willingness. And so there's that movie, right, that we talk about. I, I, I like Julia Roberts, she's a good actor. But, but Eat Love Pray is an example of an interesting movie. It's, it's, uh, it, it talks about a journey. And she goes on a journey and she kind of just, initially she's like searching and figuring out, but then she just surrenders and just goes on with it. One thing leads to another, leads to another, leads to another, leads to some romantic man on a beach. I don't know about that, but, it, it, but, but, but the point is, is that it is a journey and it's not that far off from how open-minded you need to be to succeed on yours. So that's, that's the, the, uh, uh, the topic today. Uh, that I read about in the AA book, which I really appreciate. People think AA is just about like alcohol. Ah, you know what, if, if you're open-minded, if you shed your contempt for such things, which is programmed by like everything and everything you've ever known, not easy, uh, there's actually a lot to gain in that program. There's a lot of wisdom in that program, in that way of uh, understanding things. Um, how do you know you have contempt? I'll tell you what you, what, I, I'll, I'll tell you, we call it the opposite rule, <laughs> especially in early recovery. How do you know that you have contempt for something? Uh, you probably just won't like it. Someone will say something, your body will be like, Bleh. and then and then your mind will be like, oh, he, I, he, that guy smells funny. And I was like, oh, okay, that's why. Okay, so he smells funny. That's, that's, that's why I had that reaction. And the things that just seem awesome to you, in early recovery, the things that feel really comfortable and nice, are probably the things that are going to waste a lot of your time. You'll know contempt when you feel it in your body and it 
sucks and you don't like it, that's something that you should pay attention to. I'm not saying do that, I'm just saying pay attention to that. <laughs> you really don't like AA? Maybe. Uh, maybe you have a lot of this. A lot of people lose their childhood memories with complex PTSD, they can't remember much. And so a lot of the stuff kind of surfaces in that time. So the, the um, so if you're stuck in life and you're doing, and you love to do yoga because it makes you so relaxed, but you're still stuck in life. I'm, I love yoga, but there's many kinds of yoga. The kinds of yoga that get people to where they need to go, people don't usually like that much. Uh, but it works, like Buckley, yeah. it tastes horrible, but it works, right? Uh, recovery is like that. So pay attention to what tastes you don't like. And the sign of a teacher who has something for you is they will tell you what you do not like to hear. The sign of a teacher who panders to you is they want to please you. That's not a teacher. That's a panderer. They're going to lead you nowhere. There will, be, there will come people who tell you stuff you don't want to hear. Those are the people you should hear. Not abusively. Shouldn't be abusive. You might view it as abusive. I'm just going to say that, right? Contempt prior to investigation. You're going to say that. You may not like what you're, what you're hearing, and you may project it as like, that person is a know-it-all, but inside you, you'll know. And you'll orbit, and you'll, you know. So I think that that's probably a thorough uh, covering of a very interesting concept that I read in an AA book uh, this last week that uh, brought together some concepts. What questions do you have? We have just a, a, a few minutes for questions. <coughs> What are you skeptical about? What, Dr. Gill, that's BS. What, what, what is that? Uh, I won't single you up, but I will probably use it to make a, uh, add color, more color to this. Because the one thing about truth, truth is universal, and it's always true. Real truth is true hundreds of years from now. I, I took this challenge, it was in yoga, it was in a yoga class. I said, take this challenge, Say only that which is going to be true in a hundred years. I found myself saying very little. <laughs> you should try the challenge. You try it. Say only that's what's going to hold true in a hundred years. I'm not talking forever. I'm just talking in a hundred years. And just see what comes into your mouth. And just notice how much you filter. You'll lose the, hi, how are you? Because you don't care at that time in space. How are you doing? Good! You'll start to pay attention and it, it kind of sucks, right? Because like then all of a sudden you realize, whoa, my identity is not based in reality. My identity is a projection and, uh, and that's the truth challenge. So I, uh, 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 questions, comments? Doesn't have to be questions, it can be comments. Yes. Um, so when you're talking about listening or paying attention to something that makes you feel uncomfortable, how do you separate that from following information or gut feeling or something? Yeah. Excellent question. And Recovery is the honing of intuition. What you think is your intuition is mostly subconscious programming. So that's, it, it, in, in early recovery, it's one and the same. So you've been following your gut instinct, the gut instinct leads you to living in a crack house, chances are your instinct is corrupted. Right? I'm just gonna say it how it is, right? If your intuition is how you've led life and, you, and, and your life sucks, it's not true intuition. It is uh, corrupted patterning, but they seem very same. So what is intuition? Uh, how can you discern intuition? <coughs> intuition is soft, it's quiet. So a noisy mind will never have access to intuition. A noisy mind with highly a lot of chaos in the mind, just has to be busy doing something, is gonna really struggle to access intuition. 
<laughs> and when the mind quiets down, uh, intuition is soft. But even then, so much of intuition is, uh, and when I say intuition, in yoga we call it the neutral mind. The wise mind is uh, what DBT calls it, whatever you want to call it. There's, there's all sorts of names for it. But the intuition is a soft, it's a soft calling that you just know to be true. It does show up in the noisy mind all of a sudden, because everyone gets chances, right? Your intuition will point you toward the real chances in life. Uh, but your, 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 uh, uh, teasing it apart from your gut reaction uh, requires recovery. It requires trial and error. I suggest everybody, a really good thing to do is pick something holy, okay? I don't care if you're religious, I don't care if you're spiritual, just everyone has things that they consider to be holy or na nature cards, right? Like, like animal cards, tarot cards. You know, if you're like, uh, so I'm a Sikh, so I I randomly open up the, the, our scriptures to a random page and I just gain practice. I just random and then I, I, I set an intention. May my intuition guide this choice for my highest good. May this message help me. Open it. There's days when I get a command and I'm like, man, that sucks. Because I really wanted to do that thing. And before, I would fight, and the, 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 the slap principle came into play. You get started getting hit because you're going in the wrong direction. Your intuition is telling you. It's calling in consequences. So then you bow and surrender to it. But you won't have a taste of it. The best and easiest way is to do the random thing. That's really helpful. It won't always be right because your system will even start to gain. Oh. If I go in this, if this card's usually good, well, you know, it'll start to do that, right? You'll start to do it. But it's a really good way. Everyone has intuition. I randomly open up the big book and just randomly open up the pages. I do it with random books. I've sometimes learned the most valuable lessons in random, like, any help book. Just randomly open up the page. I do it with the Bible sometimes. Just randomly open up the page. Whatever is random is guided by intuition oftentimes. So that's a good way that you can hone it. But it takes practice to hone it. And it takes maintenance to keep it honed. Because if you don't, then it gets dull again. You get confused again. You start going with the gut reaction, and then you end up back in the cracker. Oh, time. One last comment question. Now, and my apologies to anybody who ended up in the cracker. So I don't mean to belittle the cracker. <laughs> it's just a funny story that we always get around here. So it's, uh, whether it's like a horrible, difficult 30-year marriage or partner choice or whatever, your intuition uh, is corruptible. And so it's, uh, it's, it's not actually, it's just maskable. You, you, you think it's intuition, but it's actually just lust. Yeah. It's that kind of thing. No? Good? All right. Well, I think we'll leave it at that. Uh, I apologize if I offended him.